I'd like to work another example now, one where we consider our eyeball and ask in the simplest model for our eye, which is just that we'll consider it to be a big, dense ball uh, with index of refraction greater than 1, what would it take, what large index would we need in order to focus the light properly to the back of your eye? So you probably know that what does an eye do? It takes light that's coming in. And because it has a curved surface here, it focuses that light to the back to form an image on what's known as the retina. This is not exactly a realistic model of the eye, but it's a good enough one for us to start, and I'll say a little bit more about what's not realistic about it in just a minute. But for now, let's take that as our model for the eye, and I haven't said yet what the index of refraction of this ball uh, called our eyeball is. But let's say it's some number n, and we would like to make sure that the light properly focuses back here at the retina. Well, it turns out with our tools that we have in hand already, we can calculate what that index of refraction has to be. With the picture I've drawn, we're essentially saying that the light rays are coming in parallel, or if it was coming from a specific object, you know, a little object here emitting light in all different directions, Parallel light like this is kind of like saying that the object is infinitely far away. It's way off to this side to the left. So in our expression, where we say that n1 over p plus n2 over i equals n2 minus n1 over r, this term right here, this ratio n1 over p, will go to zero because if p is going to infinity, the object is infinitely far away off to the left, that means that n1 over p is going to zero. So that means I get to cancel that first term or set it to zero because p is infinitely large. Now I have n2 over i is equal to n2 minus n1 over r. And I know a little bit more. I, I know that I would like to know what n2 is. n2 is the index refraction of this ball. n1 is the index refraction of air. So I know everything up here in the numerator. I don't know what r is. I don't know what i is. But I know that they're related because I would like the image to be formed exactly here on the other side of the ball. In other words, one diameter away from where the light comes into the ball. So I know that i is equal to 2r. And I haven't thought too carefully about the signs, but let me think about that real quickly. This is the v side over here. This is the r side over here. The center of curvature of this ball is right there, and so it's over on the r side, so r will be a positive number. The way I've drawn it, the image is over here on the r side, so i is a positive number. So actually, my expression turns out to be right, and I didn't get any minus signs wrong. So I'm going to take this expression for i is 2r, and I'm going to insert it back in my original expression for relating object distance, image distance, and r radius of curvature. I'm going to say that n2 over 2r plus n2 minus n1 over r. Uh, actually, I got that wrong. That's they're supposed to be equal to one another. I still don't know what r is, but I can multiply both sides by r, and that cancels the r's on all sides. And now I have n two over two equals n two minus n one. I know what n1 is. n1 is the index of refraction of air. So I have n2 my over 2 equals n2 minus 1. I'm going to subtract n2 over 2 from both sides, and I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I add 1, and I have 1 over there. That equals n2 over 2. Or in other words, n2 is equal to 2. That's my result. 
I have found out that the ball has to have an index refraction of 2 in order to properly focus the light back to the back end of the ball. This is pretty big. If you remember, not many materials in nature have an index refraction as large as 2. Water only has an index refraction of approximately 1.3. To have something as large as an index refraction of 2 is getting up into the category of sapphire and diamonds. So our eyes are certainly not made of anything like that. And this would not be a very good model for our eyeball. In fact, we need a more clever technique to make an eye than just a, a big ball. And some of you may know that eyes have fancy things called lenses right here on the front surface that bring that light back to a focus even more sharply than just a spherical surface like this one. So we're going to talk about lenses very soon. And I'll s explain how they, they focus the light even better than just a, re a refracting curve. And we'll talk about that in just a short bit.